Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about Arnold Chiari malformation. So this Arnold Chiari malformation is of two types. One we have type 1 and type 2. First we will learn about the type 1 Arnold Chiari malformation. In type 1 Arnold Chiari malformation, you will see that there is displacement of if this is the cerebellum, you will see that there is a displacement of cerebellar tonsils into the cervical canal. I am just drawing it uh, uh, as a reference. Okay. Right. Here you are seeing that there is displacement of this. Right. Here there is displacement of this cerebellar tonsil. Uh, is seen downwards right uh, now this is the midbrain which is going to the spinal cord like this this part has to be like this okay here you will see that there is here you will you are seeing that there is displacement of this cerebellar verb the cerebellar tonsil into the cervical canal so this is important thing that occurs in Arnold Chiari malformation. This Arnold Chiari malformation is associated with syringomyelia in the cervical canal. It is not associated with hydrocephalus and this Arnold Chiari malformation presents in adolescents or adult life. Then if you see the clinical features here the child presents with sorry here the patient presents with recurrent headache neck pain is seen and you will see urinary frequency and you will also see progressive lower limb spasticity is seen in type 1 Arnold Chiari malformation. Then after this we have second type of Arnold Chiari malformation. In type 2 Arnold Chiari malformation, this is actually an anomaly which occurs in hindbrain. Here, the main thing that is happening in type 2 is there is elongation of the fourth ventricle along with kinking of brainstem is seen. Here, you will see that there is. Right, what happens here is if this is the skull okay it is associated with hydrocephalus for one important thing is it is associated with hydrocephalus so because of that there is increased pressure in the brain and as a result if you see here along the whole the even the brain stem there is displacement of even pawns and medulla and the brain stem downwards along with the inferior vermis is seen here even the inferior vermis gets displaced here along with that pons and brainstem will get displaced and you will also see the elongation of fourth ventricle is seen here. So there are two important things one elongation of fourth ventricle second there is herniation or displacement of vermis of uh, inferior vermis of cerebellum along with that even pons and medulla will get displaced downwards this is also associated with uh, myelomeningocele and hydrocephalus so, no so for this disorder we will have to do an x-ray to diagnose the disorder in x-ray you will see the presence of small posterior fossa is seen with widened cervical canal you will see small posterior fossa with widened cervical canal is seen on x-ray then if you do an MRI on the MRI you can see clearly the protrusion of the cerebellum into the cervical canal and you will also see the hindbrain abnormalities so if you see the treatment the treatment mainly includes the surgical decompression so this is about the Arnold Chiari malformation then the next important disorder is uh, that is dandy walker malformation this la dandy walker malformation is actually a posterior uh, fossa malformation which is associated with 
सिस्टिक एक्सपेंशन ऑफ फोर्थ वेंट्रिकल इनटू द पोस्टीरियर क्रेनियल फोसा आई एम जस्ट ड्राइंग ए यू नो आर्बिट्ररी पिक्चर हियर यू विल सी सिस्टिक एक्सपेंशन ऑफ फोर्थ वेंट्रिकल इन द पोस्टीरियर क्रेनियल फोसा एंड यू विल सी दैट द सरिब्रल वर्मिस एंड सरिबेलार वर्मिस देर इज हाइपोप्लेशिया there will be hypoplasia of midline cerebellum is seen okay not cerebellar vermis midline cerebellum undergoes hyperplasia that is cerebellum midline cerebellum is nothing but cerebellar vermis only no yeah so there is hyperplasia of cerebellar vermis is seen and along with enlargement of fourth ventricle why is this fourth ventricle enlarged it may be probably because it is associated with hydrocephalus actually it is enlarged due to the hypoplasia of cerebellar vermis because we do not have the cerebellar uh, uh, structure so as a result fourth ventricle increases in size then you will also see enlarged posterior fossa with lam lambdoid inversion is also seen here but anyways this will dander walker malformation here you will see there is rapid increase in head size with prominent occiput because here there is absence of cerebellar vermis completely or decreased uh, amount of cerebellum cerebellum so this will result in cerebellar ataxia and there is also delayed motor and cognitive milestones are seen in a child okay delayed motor and cognitive milestones so if you see one more important thing this is associated with cns abnormalities in almost 70% of cases those cns abnormalities include it is associated with polymicrographia then it is associated with polymicrographia um then cortical dysplasia then it is also associated with a genesis of posterior vermis so it is associated with uh, cns abnormalities cortical dysplasia a genesis of posterior cerebellar vermis and also corpus callosum if you see the investigation of choice for diagnosis is mri and treatment is you will have to shunt the cystic cavity in patients with hydrocephalus so this is about the arnold chiari malformations and dandy walker malformation thank you for watching